Uh, hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, so today uh, I'm going to discuss uh, uh, next uh, short answer question uh, past paper. This is uh, August 2019. Um, so I'd like to take just pencil to just uh, here. We have question number one. It is in the field of care of the elderly. A 72 year old woman present to the emergency department following a poll at home. She describes that she was in the kitchen when she went to turn around and became unsteady. So, uh, so she had been getting some episodes of dizziness. She had a history of dizziness on standing for the past few months, but uh, didn't notice that uh, this time. So she had a history of dizziness on standing. Um, so this is, uh, this is, I think it's relevant in history. And she had a history of unsteady uh, gait. Um, so um, she fell over onto her right hand side uh, and tried uh, to break her fall with an outstretched hand. Uh, so here in this mechanism of fall, we have to suspect uh, fracture. Most common type fracture with this mechanism of fall, it is uh, distal radius fracture. She was unable to get up after a fall due to pain in her right wrist. She lives alone. Uh, so when um, um, she lives alone, so was on the ground over 10 hours. So we have here long lie, history of long lie for 10 hours before her son called by and found her. She has a significant background history. She had history of rheumatoid arthritis. She had history of heart failure uh, with preserved injection fraction. She, ha she has a history of hypercholesterolemia, previous cholecystectomy, depression, and cataracts. Her current medication, prednisolone, low dose, it is steroid. Promibril, it is uh, ACE inhibitor, uh, indirect vas dilator. Uh, for a semide, it is diuretics, uh, atorvastatin, it is a lipid lowering agent, uh, acetalopram, it is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor antidepressant, diazepam, it is anxiolytic, benzodiazepine, lidocaine badge, it is a topical local anesthetic. She has had increasing number of fall over the past six months, so she had a history of fall uh, in the past six months and feel that she has slowed up significantly. Normally, she mobilizes with stick while at home uh, and has started using a walker when she goes uh, out uh, to the shops. So she is uh, uh, um, actually she was uh, uh, she, she, so she is uh, dependent on the uh, walker and stick uh, during her uh, activity of daily living. She goes, uh, so she, she is independent in her activity of daily living, but she has trouble going up the stairs to her bedroom recently. She has never smoked and uh, drank, and, and she drinks a few glasses of whiskey every night. So we have history of alcohol drinking here. It's, I think it's relevant here. And uh, she lives alone and uh, her only son lives in Dublin during the week, but vis visits most weekends. On examination, she is a very thin lady. Her respiratory rate is 18, so accepted normal. Oxygen saturation 94 and room air accepted normal, but pressure 100 over 60. So she had element of her blood pressure in the low side. Here, blood pressure in the low side. So she had hypotension. Um, this is, yeah, heart rate is 96, heart rate in the upper side. So she had tachycardia and hypotension, and she had irregular, irregular, uh, irregular, irregular pulse. The heart rate is irregular, irregular. This might indicate some sort of arrhythmia. So this is relevant and significant here. So she had irregular, irregular pulse. Most common arrhythmia associated with irregular, irregular pulse, it is atrial fibrillation. Temperature 35.4, so she is a little bit hypothermic. 
35.4, she is hypothermic. So temperature is low and she is hypothermic. She uh, has some swelling in her right wrist. So swelling in her right wrist where, where she fell and you notice classic rheumatoid deformity in her hand. So uh, this swelling in her right wrist, we have to suspect uh, uh, or we have to, uh, to rule out a fracture because this kind of mechanical fall or this mechanism mechanical fall, falling of outstretched hand, falling of out, uh, falling of outstretched hand, F double O as such. This mechanism is very characteristic or it is, it is uh, typical for um, this radius fracture. So uh, the other thing she had a classical rheumatoid deformity in her hand. Uh, on a closer inspection, you notice fine restrict tremor. So the patient has tremor in her right hand with some associated cogwheel rigidity. So she had some sort of uh, uh, increased tone of the muscle in uh, her right hand and, and, uh, and the right arm. So despite uh, stiff hip, she is able to mobilize short distance she has so she had stiff hip and she has a reduced arm swing and she has a shuffling gait all of these findings suggestive of um, uh, so all of these finding cogwheel rigidity and shuffling gait and reduced arm swing uh, characteristic for uh, parkinson disease so this patient is we have to suspect that this patient has a Parkinson disease. So based on the information provided above, the first question and identify three medications that may have contributed to the fall, to her fall, and give a reason for each. So, so Ramibril, it is indirect vasodilator. This, it can cause cardiovascular fall or cardiovascular mechanism of fall. What's the mechanism? It is indirect vasodilator. It can cause low blood pressure, and this low blood pressure, it can cause uh, um, decrease uh, blood supply to the brain and causing loss of consciousness and fall. So uh, for a semite, it is diuretic. It can cause hypovolemia because of diuretic effect. And this hypovolemia can lead to low blood pressure. And this low blood pressure can cause decrease uh, uh, cerebral blood flow and this can lead to loss of consciousness and fall. So this is the mechanism. These are cardiovascular medication. Are they are connected with a cardiovascular mechanism of the fall, this type of medication. We have here acetalopram. Acetalopram, it is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. It can, it, 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 it has effect on the CNS, and diazepam as well, it has effect in the CNS. These are CNS medication, central nervous system medication. It has effect in the central nervous system. It can cause uh, some sort of uh, sedation, sedative effect. And this sedative effect can lead to, uh, to uh, decrease develop consciousness and fall. So here we have acetalopram and diazepam. Diazepam is benzodiazepine as well. It has CNS effect. So uh, the last thing, it is atorvastatin. Atorvastatin, the mechanism, it can affect the long, long term use of atorvastatin, can affect the muscle. Uh, it can cause uh, myositis, uh, which is inflammation of the muscle, of the skeletal muscle. And this will lead to muscle weakness. This muscle weakness can lead to, to, uh, to fall. Um, um, these are the main things, I think. The other things we can mention, I think, the glucocorticosteroid, like the prednisolone. Prednisolone can affect the bone and can cause osteoporosis, and this can lead subsequently to the fall. So uh, these are the most important things to mention. So medication use. Medication use is one of the most modifiable risk factors for fall. Drug affecting the central nervous system, central nervous system active drugs such as neuroleptic agent, benzodiazepine, antidepressant appear to be a most common drug associated. This lady, she was an antidepressant and she was in benzodiazepine. So uh, antidepressant acetalopram and benzodiazepine, it is uh, uh, diazepam. Other medication, antihypertensive or cardiovascular medication in general, vasodilator have been associated with increased risk of falling. Other things, it is alcohol, but alcohol is not a medication. He's asking here about medication. So alcohol is alcohol abuse or alcohol use. The relationship between alcohol use and fall appears 
to depend dependent on the amount of alcohol consumed. So this is uh, 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 let's go. Uh, let's move to next question. Uh, apart from medication, uh, identify four additional potential causes or contributor to this lady lady's fall. First of all, the patient has history of cataract, so it could be it is vision problem, a sensory loss or sensory uh, problem like the vision decrease decrease in vision or, or loss of vision. Uh, um, this could be rheumatoid arthritis. It can cause uh, uh, it can affect the joint, uh, especially joint of the lower limb, uh, like the knees, and this can can lead to mechanical fall. Parkinson disease. It can affect the uh, uh, the central nervous system, uh, uh, dopamine uh, neurotransmitter. Uh, it will be depletion on dopamine transmitter, and this can affect the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, let's say the gait uh, and the balance. Uh, so this uh, can lead subsequently to fall. So Parkinson disease or query by uh, or suspected Parkinson disease because the patient in the physical examination findings she had element of findings just of Parkinson disease. So Parkinson disease is one of the uh, alcohol alcohol consumption or alcohol use is one. The patient has a history of alcohol uh, uh, use. Uh, stroke uh, stroke as a complication of atrial fibrillation. The patient in the physical examination finding has irregular irregular balls, so this indicates the patient might have a atrial fibrillation. And this atrial fibrillation, most common complication of atrial fibrillation is a stroke. So this is one of the other causes or contributor. Uh, orthostatic hypotension, uh, either uh, it is uh, um, medication induced, and this patient blood pressure is low, and the patient heart rate is, is a little bit in the upper side. So orthostatic hypotension is one of the of the the differential electrolyte disturbances, electrolyte disturbances as well uh, could be one of the differential the patient and a lot of medication that affect the electrolyte like furosemide, like uh, uh, ramipril, all of these medication can affect the electrolyte, can affect the sodium level or calcium level, and this can lead subsequently to fall. Uh, osteoporosis could be because of hair age, given hair age and given that the patient is in glucocorticosteroid, uh, um, uh, osteoporosis and muscle weakness could be uh, uh, given the patient age and given the patient weight, the patient is uh, thin, uh, hair weight is low, and uh, given that the patient on statin, all of these can contribute and contribute or are causes of uh, potential causes for uh, this lady's fall. So falls in the elderly etiology, we have intrinsic factor, we have extrinsic factor, we have situational factors. Intrinsic factor, age-related changes and age-related diseases associated with aging. Uh, musculoskeletal-like arthritis, and this lady had uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Muscle weakness, this patient is thin and she is on a statin, but this can lead to muscle weakness. Uh, this musculoskeletal mechanism or musculoskeletal etiology, we have sensory etiology, like visual uh, disturbances, uh, proprioceptive or vestibular. Uh, we have cognitive etiology like depression or dementia. This lady, she had a history of depression. So cognitive like depression, dementia or delirium or anxiety. A cardiovascular uh, etiology like coronary artery disease or arrhythmia, myocardial infarction or low blood pressure, hypotension. Neurological like stroke, decreased level of consciousness, gait disturbances or ataxia or metabolic like hypoglycemia or electrolyte disturbances. So. Uh, orthostatic or syncopial uh, uh, could be uh, etiology, orthostatic hypotension or syncope, acute illness or exacerbation of chronic illness. Extrinsic factor like environmental, like home low out uh, uh, or uh, overcrowding, or could be a new environments. Side effect of medication is very important. Polypharmacy, substance misuse, like alcohol misuse. Situation factor like the activity. Uh, sometimes it can uh, contribute to the fall. Risk factor that we are found in at least two of the studies include past medical history of the fall is a risk factor, lower extremity weakness, age, female sex, cognitive impairment, balance problem, psycho uh, uh, psychotropic drug use, arthritis, history of stroke, 
orthostatic hypotension, dizziness, and anemia. So here we have multivectorial and interacting causes of the fall. We have intrinsic risk factor again, we have extrinsic risk factor, and we have precipitating cause. All of these uh, um, can cause to fall. So the next uh, part of this question, describe two bedside and two laboratory. Here we have, you have to be careful. He is asking about bedside, two bedside and two laboratory investigation. You would request in the emergency department for further investigation to this patient. Give the reason as well. So you have to be, you have to uh, rationalize your answer for the ordering each investigation. Bedside, for example, ECG or transthoracic echocardiography, bedside uh, echocardiography or ECG for a query atrial fibrillation or for a query atrial thrombosis that can explain this patient uh, presentation. Uh, EBGs or VBGs, EBGs it is, stands for arterial blood gases, VBGs stands for venous blood gases, for check for glucose, check for electrolyte like sodium and calcium, check for acid-base balance and CO2 and oxygen level in the blood. So a rest X-ray, this is another thing we can do in the bedside for a query distal radius fracture. All of these are bedside we can do in the bedside. Laboratory investigation to laboratory, FPC to uh, rule out anemia, uh, uh, in, uh, to rule out inflammation, to check for hemostasis, check for platelet count, and for pre-op for potential uh, uh, operative room, because this patient, she might have fracture and she might uh, need uh, to go urgently or uh, uh, urgently most likely to operative uh, room. So uh, second, th other things we can order, coagulation profile, like prothrombin time, partial thromboplastin time, or INR. Hem this is for hemostasis check and as a pre-op uh, for potential uh, for, uh, over for operative room. Uh, full chemistry, including U and E, liver function test, CRP, serum glucose, rule out hypoglycemia, electrolyte disturbances and inflammation. Cardiac enzyme, CK, MB fraction, and troponin for query cardiac event, and serum CK for query rhabdomyolysis because the patient has a history of lung life in, in, the, in the floor for 10 hours. Uh, the next part of this question, it's less two complications of the lung lie. He's asking about lung lie, two complications of lung lie, thromboembolic disease like DVT and BE, pulmonary embolism, orthostatic hypotension, uh, uh, rhabdomyolysis, uh, uh, lung, lung atelectasis, and this can lead to pneumonia, uh, hypothermia, and this patient has uh, hypothermia, her temperature is 35.4, and the cubitus ulcer or uh, pressure ulcers. All of these are complication of long life. Uh, list four members of multidisciplinary team you want involved as a part of your assessment. So geriatric, uh, um, geriatric medicine specialist for comprehensive geriatric assessment, uh, um, uh, neurology, neurologist for a query Parkinson disease or a query of CVA or stroke, orthopedics for a query distal radius fracture, cardiology query for arrhythmia and cardiac events, uh, rheumatology for rheumatoid arthritis, uh, ophthalmology for vision assessment, uh, eye sight, endocrine for query osteoporosis. All of these uh, uh, multidisciplinary team has to be consulted or can be consulted. Um, imaging of her wrist confirmed that she has a distal radial, the radial fracture and you are concerned about osteoporosis. You start here on calcium and vitamin D replacement. What test would you order to assess her bone density? The best test for, uh, to, to check bone density it is DEXA scan. DEXA scan and the T score level, uh, 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 it should be less than, uh, uh, less than or equal minus 2.5. This is the T score level uh, below which. Uh, you will confirm the diagnosis of osteoporosis according to the XA scan. So apart from the calcium and vitamin D, name one other pharmacological option for treatment of osteoporosis. So treatment of osteoporosis, uh, here we have lifestyle uh, uh, modification. Uh, uh, we have drug therapy, 
The drug therapy, uh, he is mentioned in the answer, vitamin D and calcium. He is asking for anything else. Isphosphonate, this is inhibit the osteoclast binding. We have uh, rank L inhibitors and we have anabolic, anabolic uh, uh, drugs like parathyroid hormone. Uh, uh, this is the options. So the answer could be bisphosphonate, and bisphosphonate is the first line. This is the first line for prevention of the hip and non-vertebral and vertebral fractures in patients with osteoporosis. Uh, bisphosphonate, and you can mention any medication uh, uh, like uh, uh, here, uh, alindron, uh, al alindronate uh, or uh, risidronate uh, or zolidronic acid. All of these can be uh, given. Uh, rank L inhibitors um, like uh, donazumab uh, as a first line, and parathyroid hormone is other option. Uh, in in postmenopausal women, we can consider serum, which is selective estrogen receptor uh, selective estrogen receptor modulator, uh, like relaxophen. Uh, and we can consider HRT hormone replacement therapy combined estrogen and progesterone. This is that. Let's let's move on in the uh, next part of this question. And questioning about past falls, she tells you that she has had number of falls while rushing to the bathroom. She has she has been having sudden urges to get the, uh, to the bathroom without much warning, and has been finding it difficult to reach uh, there. In, in time, because of her rheumatoid arthritis, she has some difficulty uh, unbuttoning un, un trousers quickly as well. So here, what is the what is the urinary incontinence? Urinary incontinence definition, it's involuntary leakage of the urine. Involuntary leakage of the urine, this is urinary incontinence. What type of urinary incontinence do you think she is experiencing? We have air urinary incontinence, uh, most likely this patient, because here in the history, she had this urinary leakage uh, or urine leakage uh, when uh, she had a sudden urge. She had she have sudden urges to get to bathroom. This is very characteristic and very classical for urge urinary incontinence, or the other name of urge urinary incontinence is called overactive bladder. Let's two other type of urinary incontinence that you know of and key question for each that you would ask in the history. So we have stress urinary incontinence. In the history, uh, when leakage occurs, uh, uh, when she, for example, when she coughs or when she sneezes or when she uh, does exertion or effort, this is very classical and characteristic for stress urinary incontinence. Uh, um, overflow urinary incontinence, or it is called underactive bladder. Uh, this is the, 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 the cause, it might be underactive bladder, or the other cause, it is bladder outlet obstruction. Bladder outlet obstruction. Uh, history, uh, again, a history of urine retention. Uh, usually, there is a history of urine retention. And leakage occur when the bladder is overfilled. So we have to ask the, the, the lady if she has uh, 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 leakage of the urine when she is feeling that the bladder is uh, filled or overfilled. Mixed urinary incontinence, the patient will have uh, both uh, uh, symptoms. Uh, the patient will have urinary leakage when she has a sense of urgency uh, and strong desire to go to the bathroom. Uh, and the, as well, the patient will have a urinary leakage uh, when she coughs or sneezes or uh, does any effort or, or exertion. And we have what is called transient urinary incontinence. Uh, if she had any lower urinary tract symptoms or dysuria, usually this transient associated with infection, with lower urinary tract infection. So the three, qu uh, uh, th three incontinence questionnaire, it's three IQ, three incontinence questionnaire. Uh, during the last three months, have you leaked urine, uh, even a small amount? Uh, either the answer will be yes or no. If it's yes, you have to go to the next question. During the last three months, did uh, you leak urine uh, when you were performing some physical activity such as coughing, sneezing, or lifting, or exercise? If this is the case, so this is it's going to be urge uh, uh, incontinence. Uh, when, uh, I'm sorry, this is stress incontinence. This should be stress incontinence. This is called stress incontinence. Uh, when you uh, had an urge or 
the feeling that you needed to empty your bladder, but you could not get to the uh, toilet fast enough. This is called urge incontinence, if, if the answer here is yes, without physical activity uh, and without sense of urgency. So this is, it could be other type. It could be a other type uh, without physical activity or sense. If this is the answer, it's other cause only or other cause predominant. So, uh, so this is the uh, questionnaire as I think it is very useful. So urinary incontinence type, we have stress urinary incontinence, we have air urinary incontinence, we have mixed and we have overflow urinary incontinence. Here in this table, you can see the definition of each one, the etiology of each one, investigation and management for each one. This type stress urinary incontinence, uh, usually we are starting with conservative management and it can be treated surgically. So and uh, in case of failure, conservative management, the surgical treatment is one of the best option. Air urinary incontinence treatment is, uh, there is no surgical option of treatment, air urinary incontinence, for example. Um, so what to non-pharmacological advice can you give to help manage this patient urinary incontinence? Lifestyle modification here is very important. Fluid management, avoid substance and diet that has diuretic effect like alcohol, caffeine, uh, uh, caffeine or caffeinated uh, uh, liquid or, car or uh, carbonated beverages, all of these uh, uh, helpful or useful uh, advice. Avoid constipation and treat the constipation. Constipation can exacerbate urinary incontinence, increase the risk of urinary retention. Smoking, cessation, she is smoke, but I think we don't have in our, in our uh, scenario, she is non-smoker. Bilvic, but she is alcohol drinker, so this is very important to mention the alcohol. Pelvic uh, floor muscle, it's called Kegel exercises, it's, it's helpful. Bladder training, like going to, to toilet and trying to urinate as often as uh, uh, shortest uh, uh, voiding interval and urinate uh, uh, whether uh, the patient feels uh, the need or not. This is the other option. So I think this is the last uh, part of this question, question number one. Uh, I hope uh, uh, this was useful, and uh, uh, if you would like to ask me any question, you can put them in the comment, or you can uh, just uh, contact me in my email. Uh, uh, thanks for watching these videos, and uh, I hope uh, it's useful for your preparation uh, for your coming exams. Thank you.